But for now, we've got a very, very special session with Liz Elton, who is going to be doing kitchen compost printing with us. So Liz, I'm going to hand over straight to you. Um, Hi. Thanks, Neve. There we are. Great. Thank you, Neve. So I'm Liz Elton and I'm an artist. Um, I think about food and waste and soil. And in my art practice, I make work about the processes of transformation and renewal, often by thinking about compost. So some of my work is made on compostable material and I often photograph my own bin. And at home, I like to make sure that any kitchen waste goes into a compost bin so that the creatures and microbes in there can digest it and the nutrients can be recycled to enrich soil ready to grow more food. And I've got some of my own compost from my bin here. It's not the best compost, it's a bit lumpy, it could do with sieving. Um, but when this is damp, it smells wonderful. And a handful of that added to plants that I grow in pots gives them a real boost. So today, I thought we could celebrate the processes of recycling in nature by making some dynamic prints uh, about kitchen waste and compost. So here are some prints that I've made before. This is the kind of thing we'll make today. And um, these are the colors that I'm going to be using. We're just going to use three colors of paint. So I've got yellow and a light green and some brown in this one. But I've also made similar prints using very warm colors like pinks and oranges and reds. And I quite like these because if a compost bin is made properly, it can actually get quite hot. And I think these kind of colors make me think about that in my compost bin. You might also want to think about autumn leaves, some of the colors that we're seeing in the leaves at the moment. Um, they might also be a source of inspiration for you. <clears throat> so I'll put those to one side. And I think if we look down at my hands, you can see these are the materials that I've got. I'm going to make two prints at the same time today. I'll do each step first on one and then on the second one. So if you just want to make one print, that's great. Maybe you just want to listen the first time and make during the second one. Or like me, you could make two prints at the same time. So let's talk about the materials that we're going to use. I've got some pieces of plastic that I've taped to a smooth surface. And you can see mine have got bits of paint on because I reuse these all the time after this session. I'll just soak these and scrub them and reuse them. I've got some brushes, but if you don't have brushes, you can use a piece of kitchen sponge. I've got a palette, but an old plate is absolutely fine or some other smooth surface. And I've got three colors of acrylic paint. This one is quite a dark green. So I'm going to mix some yellow and some of this green to make a lighter color but choose which colors you'd like to use. You might want to use the warm ones we talked about before. I've got some of my kitchen compost waste, lots of different things in here. Um, and I'll select some of these that I think might make a nice mark as we go along. I've got some water, some little bits of scrap packaging, waste paper, some PVA glue, some ready cut paper. If you don't have ready cut paper, you could use some waste paper, something that's only printed on one side. I've used old shopping bags in the past. A bit of kitchen towel, some newspaper, a pencil, because we're going to do some drawing. And I've got a wooden spoon, 
but any smooth object will do. We'll use that to get a good mark and press things down into the paper. If you haven't got it, just press it down with your fingers. So the first thing I'm going to do is put some paint onto my palette. There's some yellow. I'm going to put a bit more yellow down there because I'm going to mix some green into that. And some brown. I'm just going to mix up this green. So it's not quite so dark. There we go, I think that's fine. I want to make a frame around my work to give a nice border. So I've got some bits of newspaper and I'm going to fold them into four. I've got two pieces together here because I'm making two prints. If you're only making one print, you only need one. And I'm just going to tear the center out. You can use scissors if you've got them, but I quite like a torn edge because it's nice and soft. And we'll use these middle bits as well. There we are. There are two paper frames. Let's see. So now to start painting, I'm going to start with my yellow because it's a nice light color. I'm just adding a little bit of water. And the thing about acrylic paint is it does dry quite quickly. I think if you're doing a lot of printing, you might want to use some oil-based paint. But today we're using lots of things that people have just got to hand. And I think it's more likely that you'll have acrylic paint to hand. We're making a nice gestural brushy mark on our first piece of plastic. You can go almost up to the edges on that. Add a little bit of water. And I'm going to let a little bit of air into my work. So I want another piece of paper, a little bit of scrap. I'm going to put my first frame over this one, just like that. And you just tap it down. And then I'm going to pop a piece of paper just to mask part of the, the print. And I've got some, some of my kitchen ways, I've got some quite nice flat bits. So a couple of leaves. And I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper, place my leaf down, and then using my green paint, I'm going to quickly paint over the leaf. And then pop that down, paint side up. And I'm going to save these little bits of paper because I might want to collage those into my work later on. Pop that down there. And then take a piece of your ready cut paper and you want to be fairly quick at this point because you don't want your paper to stick to your print 
And I'm just going to rub that down, taking care not to move the leaves around. And just picking up some of the print, the paint onto my paper. Let's see what we've got. Here we are. So you can see you've got the shapes of the leaves and that gap. Just move my leaves out of the way. And I'm going to put a piece of newspaper over that so I can just pop that one down there. And now I'm going to make print number two. So if you've just been listening so far, you might want to start making. So don't forget, we're going to start by tearing out the frame, fold the piece of newspaper into four and tear the middle out. And then this time, I'm going to use my green paint. And make a nice gestural mark across the middle of my second piece. I like this to be nice and painterly so you can see the paint strokes. the frame over the top. Little piece of paper, to make a mask. Then again, some of these leaves are quite nice just to start with. These are actually bay leaves and they smell lovely. And then I think this time I'm going to use my brown paint. Just paint over. Pop those on paint side up. I need a little bit more paint on that one, actually. Put that on there. And a piece of the ready cut paper. Over the top. Just press it down. Be careful not to move the leaves too much and do it quite fast but your paper doesn't stick to your plastic. And as I'm pressing this down, I can smell those bay leaves. I think the same thing would happen if you used some rosemary. Here we are. That's the same kind of print, just in a different color way. So I'm going to move these bits of plastic because mine are attached to a piece of cardboard. Just pop them out of the way and we'll continue to work on these two prints and make some other marks. Let's just take a moment to let people finished off that part of the process. Those are looking really lovely, Liz. Oh, thank you, Neve. We're just coming up to 20 past two, so we're about halfway through the session. Um, but yeah, this is a lovely process. So I've got some other little bits of waste here in different shapes. I've got a little bit of celery that I cut off the end of some sticks of celery. I've got a bit of lemon that came out of a drink. So I think on my first print, I'm going to use my third colour, which is brown, and pop a little bit of 
the brown paint onto this lemon. I just want to put some other little pieces of waste into the, into the print. There we are. What I like to do is to go over the edges. So it looks as if everything is breaking down and mixing up. Here we are. Maybe a bit of the celery as well. And I've also got some peelings here. So little bits of carrot peel. And they make some quite nice marks as well. So I think on my second print, I'm going to just pop some paint onto some of those bits of carrot peel. Put them down like that. And with these ones, I'll put a little bit of kitchen paper over the top and then just rub them with my wooden spoon. And that should help get some of the more subtle, mark, subtle marks onto the work. See if we can pull them up. Yep. So I think make a few marks like that on your work. I like to make some marks all going in the same direction. So it looks as if everything's been thrown into the bin. Oops. I quite like this piece of lemon peel, lemon, sorry, this slice of lemon, just off the end of a lemon that was used in a drink. So I'm gonna put some of those onto this one as well. I've got a bit more of that celery here. You see on this print, I've only used two colors. So I'm going to add a bit of the yellow. See, so I'm just popping a bit of paint onto that. This does get a bit messy, I have to say. Just while everybody's working, we want to say a big hello to some people who are joining in today. Um, hi to Bluebell Ward, so lovely to see you back again. Um, hello to Avocet Ward and, and more regular people, thank you so much for joining us. And hello to Lavender Ward, um, it's great to have you here. Um, we'd love to hear where everybody's coming in from. And also, of course, if you've got any questions for Liz, um, let us know and I can put them straight to her. Add a little bit of this carrot peel onto this print. As I'm working, if I find any other nice marks that I've made, I might put a piece of paper over them and then save them to add to my work later on. We're going to collage some of these bits and pieces into the work. I hope there are some people out there using some of those oranges and pinks. I'd really like to see some of your work in those colors. Now the good thing 
about this acrylic paint drying so quickly is that I want to get my hand into this work. And I think that this is almost dry. So I'm going to feel okay putting my hand in like this and then drawing around it. So I'm going to very quickly draw around my hand. It can be a little bit awkward. So if there's more than one person there, you might want to draw around each other's hands. Don't worry if it isn't that neat because you can go over your marks later. There we are. So I might want to make that a little bit darker in places and just go over. Oops, let me pencil. So it looks a bit like I'm throwing something into the bin. I'm going to do the same on the second print. <clears throat> Put my hand there here this time. Now, if you don't want to draw around your hand, absolutely fine. Maybe you want to add some more of the kitchen waste. Yeah. And these little marks that I made earlier, I want to add some of those because I quite like to have the absence of something as well as the mark that it's made, the mark from where it was. So I'm just gonna tear a bit of this paper off and then using my PVA glue, I'm gonna stick this into my work. Get a piece of newspaper. in there. Maybe one of these ones, the other bit of work. So it's got a blob of paint on, so I'm just going to mop that off. It sounds like people are really enjoying this session. Say hello to A4A. It's lovely that you're joining us. They are drawing around the leaves that they've collected and the autumn colours are looking really effective. So that's great. Um, we've got Wheatfield Unit. Hi to you guys. They're getting very messy and the room's smelling of onion. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi to Ward 2 as well. It's lovely that you're joining us. Um, I think everyone's really enjoying this. Great. And we're just coming up to half past two. So I like to stick a bit of packaging into my prints as well. So when I'm at home, I put as much packaging as I can into my compost heap. And that adds carbon to the mix. So I'll just pop a little bit of packaging in as well. got one question Liz if we use oh, PVA great. glue to add the leaves on will they stay on without crumbling away Ooh, I don't know I think probably yes I would use quite a bit and I'd love to know what the answer is <laughs> I imagine they'll stay on for a little while yes yeah I quite like to finish my prints by drawing into them. So I draw some seeds. These are a little bit like sunflower seeds to think about that whole cycle of enriching the soil and then growing more food. 
maybe some bean shapes. When I grow beans, sometimes I save them and dry them so I can grow them again the next year. You could just colour some of those in. And in your packs, I think I drew some worms and some wood lice. And there were some photographs as well of some slugs from my own compost bin. So you could tear some of those out if you want, or you could draw some in yourself. Or if you don't like drawing, you could take a photograph or, um, or one of the drawings that I've done. So this would last. Um, and then if you scribble over the back with your pencil, and then put that down on your drawing with the scribbled side down and go over the drawing quite hard. Hopefully you will find that you've, you transfer some of those pencil, some of that scribble to your work. And then you should have an outline that then you can go over again. I'd love to see what people decide to draw. So you probably can't see it on the camera, but there's a very faint, some very faint lines that I can then go over. And that will transfer my wood louse to my drawing. There we are. I quite like to, to put some different marks in. So it's quite nice to add some drawing. I was interested to hear people were drawing round leaves. I'm just looking at some of those leaves I've already drawn. I'm drawing those into the work. Maybe we could just stick one of these wood lice into this one. I do wonder if anyone's drawn a slug. I find enormous slugs in my, in my compost bin. If you've got some seeds, you might want to glue those into your work as well. I'm going to go on drawing some of these leaves into this just to give a bit more variety to the marks. Maybe some more seeds as well. Just say a quick hello to the mother and baby unit in Winchester. Thank you for joining us. There's lots of your works concerned with the environment. Can you tell us a little bit more about your wider practice? Um, yes, I, I think a lot about food waste and also about the exhaustion of soil. Because those two things seem quite connected to me. And I think they're really important issues now. So some of my big installation work thinks about those things by using 
a compostable ground and I make some dyes out of my own kitchen waste. So things like onion skins and avocado stones. And I color those compostable grounds using my own kitchen waste. So a lot of my work doesn't last very long. I might put it outside and it might get quite damaged or it might just start to break up naturally. I think a lot about landscape. I sometimes look at images from Google Earth looking down on the land and then I make big floaty, bit like landscape paintings, often thinking about food waste and, um, and how precious the soil is and how we sh should look after it, a bit like we look after our own skin. During lockdown, I was looking into my kitchen compost bin and I was sure I could see a painting. And so then I started to photograph my bin when it looked like a painting and to make additional prints of those photographs. really interesting to think of artworks that don't last forever you know that do disappear I think it makes us think about time passing and sometimes I try to think about a point in the past so I might think about someone like um well there's a Victorian art critic called John Ruskin so I think about his life and where he lived and then Sometimes I put, so I might think about that landscape and then I'll put seeds of vegetables or medicinal plants into the work to think about the future and when those plants might grow. Maybe think about healing, about nourishment. Jack's just asked us why would it disappear? Because sometimes Liz is working with materials that are biodegradable. Is that right, Liz? That's right, yeah. I, I often use the kind of compostable bags that we use for food waste. I don't know if your council do this, but where I live, the council give me these bags and they will come and collect my food waste if I put it in one of these bags. And then the bag is designed to break down. Now I think it depends how good your compost bin is, to be honest, and how efficient your composting is as to whether it will break down. Um, but that is what that material is designed to do. So if you've got a really good compost bin going and you're using one of the bags that's designed for home composting, you may find that it will disappear with your food waste in the compost bin. Hey Liz, we're just coming up to near the end, but I know you wanted to share something about some of the things you've been growing. Yes, um, these are the prints that I've made so far. So we'll have a look at those at the end maybe. Um, but one of the things I quite like to do in the winter time is to grow something at home. And so I've been growing these pea shoots and they're really delicious. I just cut them off and scatter them on top of salads. Um, I've got an old mushroom box here that I've used several times and I've just got a bit of soil or you could use potting compost, get it from somewhere clean um, and then I just scatter that into something like this mushroom container or you could use an old bowl um, 
And then these little peas, these are called marrow fat peas. They're dried. I don't know if you can see. And so I soak those overnight or for 24 hours, just scatter them onto some soil and cover them over and leave them, just keep them slightly damp, not soaking, but just slightly damp. And within a few days, you should see them sprout. I planted these ones about 10 days ago. You see already I've got a crop that I can harvest and I can use. Uh, and I just think that's something that's quite nice to do in the winter time, just to grow something, keep us in touch with the soil and in touch with, um, with growing our food. And I'd love to know if anybody tries that out. And if you wanted to, you could collage some of those peas or seeds into your work as well. Shall I hold these up, Neve? Is that? Yes, please. Let's have a little look at the, the prints as they are. <laughs> I would love to see what everybody else has made. If you want to share them. And yes, then we can absolutely. see them on the hospital room site. Yeah, please do share your prints with us. We've just had a few more comments and questions coming through. Um, oh, great. Because, um, broccoli sprouts, sprouts are superfoods and great on sandwiches. I agree with you there. Um, A4A, you've been growing things over the summer and still have salad leaves. Fantastic. I um, and we've got a question I want to ask Liz, the type of paints that she uses on the plastic installation work. Um, well, I often dye the material with my own dyes that I make for my own kitchen waste. And then I might use watercolour or I might use water miscible oil as well. I've even used some food supplements like spirulina um, mixed with um, paint medium or with... Um, Oh, I can't remember what the name of the material is. It's a it's a kind of resin that I think we get from the acacia tree. Gum Arabic, that's it. So I might mix other things with gum Arabic and use those onto the material as well. And then I sew the sections together with silk and um, I embed seeds into them too sometimes. And what types of paints do you recommend for printing? Could you use food colouring? Oh, I've never done that. I do sometimes use food colouring, actually, as well as dyes in the big installations that I make. Um, I think you probably could. And I'm thinking about this on the spot because I haven't done it. But maybe if you mixed it with something like a rice glue, um, you could make your own paint or um, with a solution of gum arabic it'd certainly be very interesting to try but food coloring will probably fade and change color whereas the professional paints if you want to keep the color then you, you'll find that they, they will they will work better and they will last longer um Thank actually you. neva I just wanted to say about printing, if you want to do a lot of printing, I would use an oil based paint um, just because it takes a bit longer to dry and you can spend longer working into it. Um, but as you see, these uh, acrylics have worked quite well um, if we work quite fast. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Liz. What an amazing session today. I think everybody's really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I'm just going to share my screen one more time um, this afternoon. Um, here we are. So, yes, a huge, huge thank you to Liz. Um, thank you for such a wonderful session, thinking about the environment, the outdoors, and using some of those things in our own kitchens um, in a new and different way. Um, so. Lots of you will know a little bit about Hospital REMS already, but we are an arts and mental health charity, um, ordinarily bringing artworks and art workshops into inpatient wards in mental health hospitals. 
Um, but of course, the digital art school is a very, very important aspect of our work and it enables us to bring lots more people together doing creative activities. Um, we do have a library of past activities that you can access um, and you can stay up to date with all of those through our mailing list and newsletter, which you can sign up to. You can also subscribe to our YouTube page and that's where you'll find a back catalogue of different things that you can take part in. Um, we really would love to see what you've done today. So please, please upload your artworks to the Hospital Rooms online gallery. You can do that by visiting hospital-rooms.com and then um, visiting the Digital Art School tab. And there's a big button in the gallery page where it says upload your artworks here. And we would really, really love to see them. We will be back next week. Um, we have a lovely artist called Oscar Crabb and he's going to be doing paper applique with us, um, which is extremely exciting. But we have to say another great big thank you for um, being with us this afternoon. Um, a great big thank you to Liz and to Windsor and Newton Art. Oh, thank you, everybody. So I have really hoped to see you again next week. Um, but thank you very much, everybody, and take care. Bye-bye.